So we're at the Veterinary Center today to talk about responsible pet ownership. Um, while it's really fun to work here because we get to see lots of really cool animals and really terrific owners, um, not all pets are for everybody. Um, we're here today with Alex and his three-year-old little wallaby here, Indy, and um, we're here to talk about the fact that you can't just buy these animals on a whim. Um, today, you know, available by internet, you can get anything you want to, and including uh, little creatures like this guy. And the big thing is that although he is adorable and friendly and sweet and clearly so domesticated, I mean, how could anyone resist this face? Um, this is not a pet that everybody should have. You really, really need to think long and hard before you get a walk with your else. Absolutely. It's not a decision to be taken lightly. He's a full-time job. Uh, he's grown up now, like Dr. Said, Dr. Has said, he's about three. Uh, right out of the pouch when you'd be getting them, they're about this big, and need to be fed every two hours, carried around in a pouch like this. Uh, unless you're working somewhere where you can have a kangaroo strapped to your chest all day, I would, I would not recommend it. He's really a full-time job, and if you don't put in 22, 24 hours a day with them when they're young, you're not going to end up with a wallaby or a kangaroo that is friendly, that will let you hold it, that will let you treat it if it gets sick. Uh, you really need to make a commitment to this animal that is above and beyond what you need to make to say a dog or a cat. Explain, I mean, the one thing that you have done so much, so much research, explain how much space this animal requires at home. It requires a lot of space. Uh, as you can imagine, kangaroos hop. So he has uh, indoors about 2,500 square feet of open space, not small individual rooms, but he's in a, a big loft type area where he can really bound around. And then he has four acres outside, fenced in, six foot fences. Uh, they can jump very, very high. They can jump very, very far. And while they're not escape artists who are looking to escape, if he sees something that spooks him, you know, they could get out. And once they get out, you have a real problem. So they, they really need acres of open grass to, to graze on. He loves grass, leaves, and then if you plan on having a wallaby indoors as a pet, it needs a lot of space to move around. It's not like having a chihuahua that can run around in circles in a little pen. Uh, you need to be willing to give this animal the run of your house. This is not a caged animal. It's not a guinea pig. Uh, he has full run of the house. He has access to everything. He doesn't go upstairs. But uh, the entire first floor of the house is, is his domain, and I'm, I'm very lucky that he uh, was very easy to potty train. He goes on a pad. I have friends who are not so lucky, and you have to know that if you want this animal in your house, he might be going to the bathroom everywhere, and that's something that you are going to have to deal with as a pet owner and not you know, just say, oh, well, I wasn't expecting this. There are a lot of work, and, and it's really not to be taken lightly. And, you know, we talk about unique types of animals. I mean, Indy is a wallaby, which is a marsupial, and they are very comfortable when they're enclosed in a pouch. And it sounds silly, but this is actually a man-made pouch um, that he feels very safe in. Um, we've done a couple of surgeries. He had a tooth problem at one point. He needed to be neutered. And the best way for us to handle him was to actually anesthetize him in the pouch. You can't really appreciate it because he's, you can only see the top half of his body, but he has huge feet. Um, yeah, we could, we could stick a foot out and you'll get an idea of just how big these feet are. So these feet are huge, they're very, very powerful, they could kick someone in the stomach and they could really knock you down. Um, they can inflict injury in your house, they can kick into a wall, and if he hit a wall with one of his feet he could break his foot. Um, as Alex said before, they can jump, they can jump seven to nine feet in the air. So unless you have a home um, that with a fenced in yard with a really strong fence, I have other patients, you know, wallaby patients that have gotten out and have actually gotten hit by cars um, because they've escaped. Um, but being in the pouch, I mean, this is not something you just do when they're little. I mean, you mm, tell them what you do. Cer every day. Certainly not. He's probably in the pouch four to five hours every day. Uh, it really is his favorite place to be. This is, again, not a dog that is comfortable sitting next to you or sitting in your lap. I come home from work, I strap up the pouch, I put him in the pouch for about an hour, and at least five nights a week or so I sleep with him on my chest, strapped to my chest in the pouch for at least three or four hours. Sometimes in the middle of the night he'll wake up and he'll wake me up and I'll let him out. But he loves being in the pouch. They never forget that sense of safety that they felt when they were young in their parents' pouch. So he's strapped in here, this very fashionable jean fanny pack, a good five hours a day. It's, it's really, it's a huge commitment. It's almost like having a child that will never grow up. 
uh, they're a joy, he's the sweetest thing in the world, but you don't get a sweet wallaby that acts domesticated just by owning one. It's, it's a lot of work. And that's really the point here is, you know, there are a lot of people that don't necessarily even think these should be pets, I mean, right. honestly. But the point is, these pets are out there, these animals are out there, and they're available, and they really aren't for everyone. So whether it's a wallaby or a guinea pig or a lizard or whatever, or a bird, you know, all exotic pets have very special requirements. And as a responsible pet owner, you need to decide beforehand, do the research, and decide whether this is an animal for you. Um, whether you have the time and the, the commitment financially, space-wise, everything, to have a pet like this. And if you're going to do it, do it the right way. Otherwise, you won't get the joy out of the animal that you, you know, that you get. I mean, the reason that this is such a terrific animal and he's so great is because Alex has spent this time with him. If he hadn't, you know, he would not be hanging out here with us like this. So, again, do your research. Seek out people who can help you. That's what we do here. We educate people. We consult with people when they're considering buying a pet, and we'll we'll talk to them ahead of time to see whether it's the right choice for them. And if you do get this particular pet, the species, you know, again, be prepared and follow through and take good care of them medically, socially, and you can have a great pet like you do. Right? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.